Hello and welcome to the Daily Re Reflection for Saturday the 11th of July. My name is Nick and I'm one of the occasional preachers in the parish. Our reflection is based on Luke chapter 19 verses 11 to 27. If you'd like to read the passage, please pause the video now. Let us pray. God our Father, may we take to heart the message that Jesus gave us through this parable. Amen. It's the parable of the pounds or talents, and it's filled with many meanings, depending on how you view it. When Jesus told this to his disciples, they would have understood the historical context regarding the horrid king who went to Rome to get permission to be king, as that of Archelaus who wanted to succeed his father, Herod. There is a view that it is about the last judgment and what will happen to the people because of the way that they had led their lives. However, Luke puts this parable in the narrative of Jesus' journey to, to Jerusalem, recounting the actions he took in the temple with the money changers and his preaching, which finally led to his crucifixion. Jesus meant by this parable that there would be grace and mercy for his believers if they behaved as true believers, and no mercy for those who did not believe nor wish to hear his message. For the disciples, it was about the here and now, and for the elders and the Pharisees, it was a warning of what they would face. The parable ends with a terrible judgment, which the disciples would have understood. Matthew and Luke write about this parable with a slightly different emphasis, but both quote several servants who were entrusted with the king's money, with orders to make use of it and make more money. Matthew quotes talents, which were small sums of money, and Luke quotes talks of pounds, which are large sums of money. The size of the value of the coin is irrelevant. It is the point that Jesus is making which we need to understand and act upon. From verse 15 onwards, we read, He was made king and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came and said, Sir, this pound has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, the master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your pound has made five more. His master answered, You can take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your pound. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his pound away from him and give it to one who has ten pounds. Sir, they said, he has ten already. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The king expected that whilst he was away, his servants who were loyal to him should act in his best interests, while he was, which was to make good use of the money he gave them. The point that the, Jesus was making to his disciples and to us is that if we say we are his followers and believe and trust in him, then we should work for his kingdom and glory here on earth. All of us have been given spiritual gifts and the challenge that Jesus gave through the parable is to use those gifts for growing his kingdom here on earth. It's a lifelong challenge. Paul, in his first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 12, said, now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be misinformed. 
There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Many of us might think, well, what are the gifts I have been given? I have not had a calling to be a priest or a lay minister, so what, what can I do? I suggest a starting point is in following the two great commandments. To love God with all our heart and soul and to love our neighbour as ourselves. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown that thousands of people have risen to the challenge of loving their neighbours. As followers of Jesus, we must overlay that with our love for God and his word. In our parish here in Walton, there are many roles and opportunities to serve God. It does not have to be as a preacher or having a leadership role in a service. It could be as a welcomer and befriender before and after a service, helping in the Sunday school, the food bank, as a steward or flower arranger, a member of the PCC, or someone who keeps in touch with the people who are shielding during this crisis. All of us can give money regularly for the work of the church. There are many ways to use our gifts as followers of Jesus. Many of us in the parish have been on the servant course, which is run several times a year. It helped us to identify the spiritual gifts we have been given. For some, it confirmed that what they were doing was right for them, as it fitted in with the best use of their gifts. For others, such as myself, it gave us a new direction and allowed us to stop doing some things as our gifts were better used elsewhere. Without that course, I would not be speaking to you now. It never occurred to me before I went on it that this was something I could do. So, if you wish to know more about your spiritual gifts, first pray for guidance. You can check the parish's website as to when the next course is to be run, and please talk to any of the Ministry of Tea. The meaning of the parable is plain. As followers of Jesus, we need to use our gifts to further his kingdom here on earth. According to the gifts we have, there will be a return the size of which is not the point. The key thing is that we use them. It's about God's grace and mercy to all who truly believe in him and act. The anger of the king towards the servant who hid the money was fierce and terrible. The message from Jesus is that if we claim to be his follower and do not use our gifts in his service, then we are lost. Let us pray. Father, may we be guided by the Holy Spirit to use the gifts you have given us to demonstrate your love and glory as we go about our daily lives. Amen.